students, this is Mrs. Giroux, and I am eager to get our final critique done for digital photography. So come along with me. Let's get it done. So the critique will not have a quiz, but you will still be able to vote for winners. We're going to announce the light painting winners, go over those standards one more time, review the four critical thinking steps, we'll critique the black and white with color splash assignment, and then we'll critique the juxtaposition. You will be able to vote for winners for both of those assignments. Let's announce the winners of the week five light painting assignment. We did have a lot of runner-up students. And honestly, how can you even choose because all of these light paintings were so cool and so different and unique that if your painting is not here, just know that I loved them all. I cherished everyone. So let's talk about the winner. Congratulations, Danielle Lefebvre. She also has a French name like me, Giraud and Lefebvre. Yes. Um, so let's go over the Utah Visual Art Standards. We have four standards, making, perceiving, expressing, and contextualizing. You made those awesome light paintings and learned long exposure, and then you started learning about the post-editing process using a software program called GIMP, which is the equivalent of Adobe Photoshop. And um, you are learning how to change things to black and white, adjust the brightness and contrast, and how to select images. There are a number of selection tools that can be used and how to erase backgrounds, make layers transparent so that you can see layers underneath. It's been a lot of learning in a short amount of time for you. But using those post-production techniques is a, a way of you being able to create more content and more meaning um, with that assignment where you made the background black and white and only had one part of it, the subject in color that creates emphasis, which is one of the principles of design. And then in that final project, we used contextualization because we decided that we were going to talk about juxtaposition. Now, you normally will hear of juxtaposition in your English classes where it is used as a literary device. And it is a very powerful device, whether it's used in literature or in visual arts or theater, in any form of art, it can be used in dance, music, juxtaposition, taking two opposites and placing them side by side to create this contrast that is so unexpected and startling. And I really wanted you guys to push it with juxtaposition. It's an opportunity to get crazy thinking outside of the box. And I just felt that too many of the submissions didn't push it, didn't take advantage of this opportunity to really push it in the creative side of things. Um, but nonetheless, you still did use the techniques, which is great, but I really am wanting you guys to create content that makes the viewer want to sit and stare at your picture, okay? If it's not something that is different, unexpected, um, the viewer may not really have anything to think about when they look at that artwork. And part of creating art is to stimulate thought. Also, a big part of um, art is that refining process. And I did give a lot of comments this week um, and asked you to refine your work. And I know that sometimes when you receive criticism, it can be painful or it can make you feel angry or I know these feelings are just, I, I get it. I've been in a lot of art classes. I've received a lot of critiques and I know how frustrating it is when you're just like, but that's my message and that's what I'm trying to say. And I don't want to just change it because you want me to. I get it. I know. I've, I've been there a million times. But your teachers really are trying to get you to get outside of your own head. And so with this piece right here, one of the things I noticed about it, and I noticed it in a lot of the juxtaposition pieces because you were taking um, a, a different subject from an image and placing it on top of another image, is it just feels disconnected. The, if you think about the elements of art, look at color. Color definitely is um, appearing over here 
and this side of the image with the yellow. So there is a little bit of unification there. But in real life, if an angel were floating over this landscape, that light is so bright, it would be hitting these mountains down here. And these mountains would have a yellow reflection of that bright illumination. And the clouds would also be illuminating that yellow light coming from the angel. So that is why this angel is not really looking like it's a part of the image, which apparently was the artist's intent. But I'm asking you, in my feedback to try to make it feel like the two images are one and that they actually fit together. So this is the result. The student went back and really put, helped that yellow to come into the original picture reflecting down onto the mountains and into the clouds and so I just think that it is such a huge improvement. Um, and maybe you disagree with me, but I think it looks amazing. So thank you for taking that feedback and for all of you who have done that. I appreciate that it's a very humbling experience. You have to kind of like let go of ego and just try it. And I'm glad that the student did. So the critique is a four-step critical thinking process. Description, what do you see? What's the subject matter? Um, what medium is it? Analysis when we go in a little deeper and talk about the elements of art and principles of design and how they're used to create an impact and the interpretation, what is the artist's message, the evaluation, was the artist successful at conveying the message and was it a powerful enough message that it really inspired the viewer. Remember to incorporate these elements of design into your thought process, into your creative process, and when you are critiquing and evaluating artworks, think about the way these elements of art are put to good use. The principles of design create intrigue, interest, pattern, contrast, emphasis, balance, proportion, harmony, and rhythm. These principles are what really make an artwork interesting. So if you find that your artwork is looking a little dull, go to those principles of design and say to yourself, hmm, how could I incorporate another principle in my image? How could I make it a little more interesting? So let's go ahead and critique the black and white with color splash assignment.
Touching me
Stomp your feet, shake your body, stand still. Okay, goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends. Goodbye, goodbye, I have fun today.